The World of Tanks Blitz comp scene is not necessarily that popular. The most views from comp battles, in my guess, are mostly for lockbox keys so that you can get your hands on free premiums. In fact, I'd be willing to guess that a lot of you probably only watched the tournament streams so that you could also get your hands on these lockbox keys. So, in today's video, I figured I would talk about the two vehicles that you could have gotten for free with the lockboxes, either the M4 Yo or Skoda T56. So we're going to start off with the M4Yo, talk about its gun, play style, why it is one of the weirdest autoloaders available in the game, and uh, why it's actually also a pretty solid performer. So let's get straight into it. Starting off with the gun, it's pretty inaccurate, which I always found weird. 0.362 dispersion for a 310 alpha 105 millimeter is, is pretty disappointing. I definitely feel the gun should be more like eh, 0.326, something around that area, but oh well. The aiming time is also pretty poor at 3.5 seconds. What is pretty solid is the 2156 DPM. It's also a very fast clip reload at only 13.5 seconds. Why? Well, that is because this is an autoloader with a 6.98 second intraclip. Yes, you heard that right. The intraclip on this vehicle is almost as long as the base reload on a Tiger II. The reason this is actually quite nice, though, is because you have a slightly better better DPM value with your four shells than any other real single shot vehicle. And all you need to do is back up for about 13 seconds, which is two shells worth of time, to get that faster reload back once again. So essentially, as long as you have that little bit of downtime to sit and cover, you're always going to out DPM your opponents. It actually allows this tank to be quite confident. Add that into the fact the vehicle's got great standard and premium penetration, and it's got fantastic gun depression, it's actually quite solid. It's also decently mobile, reaching a top speed of 40, a reverse of 18, and it has the reserve track mechanic where if your track gets broken you can still reverse at a slightly slower top speed of like what four kilometers per hour it's still something i actually think the m4 yo is a pretty cool and unique tank which is something i would like to see brought into tier 10 it'd be very awesome to have an auto reloader that was slightly better on dpm than the average single shot vehicle but also didn't have great dpm in the grand scheme of things because of the fact eventually you're gonna have to reload the clip at a faster time Kind of like how the Minnow is on World of Tanks PC. Now, something else I should point out about this vehicle is the very solid armor. The turret is completely round, and with that, even the sides of the turret are around 250 mils thick. It's actually quite impressive. So, really, the only weak spot when it comes to the turret armor is that hatch on the roof. Now, you can try to hide that hatch by sticking the gun up, as you can see, but, yeah, for the most part, it's going to be pretty hard to hide. When using gun depression, that hatch is going to be even more easy to shoot for the majority of opponents. So, yeah, you're going to have to be very cautious when using this vehicle. That hatch is definitely a major, major weak spot. The upper plate's actually quite strong, but the lower plate is obviously pretty weak. Same for the sides, but not a cheable weak, which is pretty nice. So, up against us, we have an ML1 and a Tiger 1. It doesn't look like anything's been spotted, though, as there's the Tiger, uh, not the Tiger, the Emil already on the other side of the map. We got a T20 who has stepped in the base B. Odd. Alright, well, let's see if we can get any damage. Ah, not just the T20 has stepped in the base B. So there you go. You can see we've already been able to get one shell out. And we're going to reload here, and boom, there's our second shell. You can see how the auto-reloading gun on this vehicle isn't really an auto-loader. It's a single-shot tank that just has a fast reload. But this reload does feel incredibly fast when you're able to get it to work. So just like that, we were able to get our full clip out of 1,276 damage. It obviously took us a pretty solid chunk of time, around 18 seconds, but look at how fast this vehicle's overall clip reload is. We are already back in action just 13 and a half or 14 seconds later. So just like that, we're now going to push over to this T20 and see if we can get some damage into his tank. So here we go. One bonk right into his vehicle. I'm not exactly sure what this T20 is doing, but we also have the Charioteer off to our side, which is obviously not exactly what I want to be stuck fighting. So let's back up to where the Charioteer 
teammates here can no longer hit me over here and bonk nice shot into the t20 once again apparently the charioteer was still able to hit us there but that's fine we're gonna get one more shell by the way you can see the terrible terrible hatch armor even though the charioteer couldn't pen us anywhere but the hatch he hit us both times in it showcasing really the massive weakness when it comes to this tank but the good news again look at this crazy good clip reload just in a couple seconds we've been able to get that clip entirely reloaded and this charioteer is obviously not in the most fun of situations now we just reload the clip once again our judo is going to be able to finish off that player and all that's left is the magnate and t69 so this was a very very solid game for the m4 yo it really showcased a lot of the strengths and weaknesses of the vehicle yeah that hatch especially if you don't put this tank in a proper situation will let you down big time but the gun is is actually really solid especially if used correctly you can see even though the dispersion isn't very good the majority of times it still hits its shots because of the fact it's actually got decent on move dispersion so our first game was a pretty solid victory we were able to deal over 2900 damage as you can see and uh yeah really no problems there 1300 damage block now to be fair the majority of that was from a t20 firing high explosive at us and i'll be real the majority of opponents we fought were pretty dang stupid but still the m4eo is a very solid take to showcase just how strong the turret armor is on the M4Yo, we have a T-34 running calibrated shells aiming at this vehicle. That is 260 millimeters of AP penetration that, as you can see, literally has no chance of cutting through the M4Yo's turret. And that is because it is 300 millimeters thick base. Even if you're loading APCR rounds, this turret is still quite well armored and using gun depression makes it literally impervious to even T-34 APC which is 312 millimeters of penetration that is absolutely insane and as i said even going to the side of the turret it is still very well armored upwards of 230 to 260 just because of the way it's designed so the turret armor on the o is super super strong and as well the upper plate is also upwards of 250 to 240 so it's actually a very well armored vehicle it is just very unfortunate that the hatch is big and super super weak i understand why it has to have a hatch because let's be real if it didn't have one this tank would be mighty overpowered but uh it is a little bit unfortunate and as i said you can't really hide the hatch if you stick the gun up you're gonna make this part of the vehicle a weak spot to any premium ammunition so essentially just the best thing to do is use your gun depression and hope they don't hit it now we move on to the Skoda T-56, a Tier 8 Czechoslovakian heavy tank, which, at least in my opinion, has a lot more going for it than the M4 Yo. First of all, its armor is flat better, not only on the base armor of the upper plate, but as well, the hatch is not nearly as easy to shoot on this vehicle. But as well, when we take a look at the gun, it has much more damage per shot at 450. Sure, its DPM is about 400 less, but hitting harder does equate to sometimes more effective dpm due to the fact that you don't need to poke as much you don't need to expose your weak spots as much it's just a one hit and done now we can see dispersion wise yeah this tank is pretty inaccurate at 0.394 and the aiming time at 5.6 seconds is quite possibly the worst in tier 10 however on the good hand it does have very solid pen of 226 on the standard and 295 on the premium this vehicle also features fantastic gun depression so it's it's a weird vehicle it's got a lot of great things going for it but it's also hindered by those great things the gun hits hard especially on the he at 640 damage per shot that is some of the hardest hitting damage in tier 8 for a heavy but as i said uh it's obviously got some big downsides as well when it comes to that gun so while we're waiting to load in the battle i figured we'd talk about the armor and again this is what a t34 sees with ap ammo i mean look at that upper plate it's upwards of 267 even loading premium we can see that it's around 200 98. That means using the 8 degrees gun depression, nothing is going to pen your upper plate. And we can also see the turret cheeks are very, very strong. It's really only these little edges right here you're going to pretty easily pen, but that's a very hard shot to hit. The hatch is much harder to see, hidden by the spaced armor here. So definitely I would say that the Skoda's armor is better, especially when you add in it has the same gun depression it's just better armor so that's the nice thing mobility wise this tank is also pretty fast we can see it here it's just actually very mobile so we're gonna try and use this eight degrees of gun depression going to mid hill at b on canyon 
and uh, work it against the enemy. Something else I love about the Skoda is that it has one of the coolest legendary camos in Tier 8. It's animated, it's got little fire shards that come off of it, which is absolutely epic. Oh, game bugged out again and shoved my turret off to the side. But we can definitely see, yeah, the aiming time, it's atrocious. I mean, look at that. We still haven't even started aiming in yet. Still haven't started. There you go. Now we have finally started aiming in. And just like that, our shell missed by a quarter mile. So, yeah, the Skoda does have a big old downside when it comes to the gun. It's accuracy. It's, it's tragic. But... If you can get it to work, it does feel pretty dang solid. So let's aim in right where the size 6 is going to cross. And there you go. A nice 420 slap. So not all too bad. All we have over there is a T29, which I can't really say is anything amazing. But trying my best here. We got the uh, Tiger P who might cross this. Although doesn't look like he's going to. I'm going to give him about a couple more seconds to cross. And if he doesn't, yeah, I'm not going to waste my time on that. We're going to... Oh, he was so close to crossing, but we're going to aim it on the Amex AC over here. Again, aiming, 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 and boom! But look at that, a 460 damage shot, bringing a very healthy tier 7 down to not very healthy anymore. Again, alpha sometimes is key, and when it comes to driving this tank, it definitely feels so, so nice. We got the enemy T2064 off to the side, and oh boy, yeah, that's our bad dispersion there working against us. Oh well. We got 10 more seconds left on our next shot. Now obviously, with poor DPM and high alpha, it means that our uh, reload is quite long. So you do have to keep that in mind when using this type of tank, is that you're going to be sitting here reloading for a while. But again, if you're able to connect a shell, not like that. Oh wow. Alright, well, you're definitely seeing some of the distance. Ah, I was trying to capture the base and not get shot. Unfortunate for us, I guess. But let's reload. Maybe we can get a shell into the Tiger P. He is showing me his weak side armor, so maybe we can... Eh, we'll just load heat. There you go. Finally a penetration coming out of this vehicle. The problem right now is base cap, and we can see that. The enemy is up to 670 of it, to be exact, which is not really good for our team. But I should be able to get some nice shots out here. The uh, M41 Bulldog is indeed capturing the base, and we are going to aim right on the IS-6 turret cheek. Okay. All right. All right, well, while this tank may be better in some situations, it is definitely not better right now. That is the best way to describe it. Um, the gun is not working with us right here, but now we are going to connect to Shell Guaranteed. We're going to stop this IS-6, and he's dead. So that's not all too bad. We are up to 1,700 damage at this point in time. All right, well, let's see if we can get any damage into the KV-4. Aiming, uh, we should actually be able to overmatch his roof, but at the same time, I don't trust this gun enough, so we're just going to fire a standard shell. We got the Tiger P off to our side, and he's going to shoot at us, but we were able to capture the base, so that's really all I wanted to do. T28 Proto is going to get a big bonking slap into that player. We're going to drive over the ridge, and uh, let's see if we can get another shell out. Uh, bonk, nice, 450 slap. All right, well, obviously this KV-4 is not enjoying life all too much. He's being hit by the T-28 prototype. I don't think the M-41 can actually pen him, but that's completely fine. Let's aim in and fire. There you go. So, yeah, I mean, you can see the Skoda. It's definitely a lot more irritating. The gun sometimes does not like to work with you when shooting at the IS-6 turret cheek to shooting at really anything at distance. This gun is tricky, but again... We did the exact same result, 2,900 damage, so I can't really say we did worse, just the gun did a lot worse. We probably could have done a decent chunk more damage in the M4Yo than the Skoda this game, actually a lot more, most likely, but uh, that's just one of the RNG factors you have with this tank. Late game, especially frontline positioning, this vehicle feels fantastic, and you can see that on my stats. I'm going 84% with 2,700 damage in this vehicle, where my M4Yo, even though the gun is technically better, I'm going 70%. With, albeit the same damage, but yeah, unfortunately, this tank just doesn't seem to carry as hard due to the way the armor profile is designed and the gun not hitting nearly as hard. So, at the end of the day, I still think the Skoda is a better vehicle, but let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.